Shabbat Shalom. Years ago, I was working at Camp Ramah in the Rockies, fabulous camp, where electives include horseback riding, wilderness survival, mountain biking, and much more. One of my jobs was to help the staff leading activities to incorporate Jewish learning and experiences into their curriculum. One of the rock climbing instructors came to me and asked me to create a small laminated card that climbers could bring with them on expeditions that they could attach to their harness. And she wanted this card to have on it the blessings that are known as Birkot Nehenim, the Jewish blessings of appreciation. As the climbers were pushing themselves and overcoming challenges, she wanted to create rituals for them where they could take a moment to stop and notice what they had accomplished and to appreciate their surroundings. If they had reached the top of a tall cliff, she wanted them to be able to turn around and look down and see the blessing for seeing a beautiful sight. The, bl the blessing Osema Asebre Sheet, the one for the one who creates the wonders of creation. When they were eating, perhaps while taking a break from physically strenuous work, she wanted them to notice the food and to say the appropriate blessings over it. If during their trips they were out in the rain, maybe getting soaked, and then after the rain there was a rainbow, well, she wanted them to say the blessing over the rainbow. She wanted those blessings to be a regular practice for her students so that knowing, noticing, and appreciating their surroundings would permeate their climbing experience. I too love Birkot Nehenin, the blessings of appreciation, which are typically recited before enjoying food, smells, or unusual sights. I love the way that they help us be more mindful of our lives or have the potential to do that anyway. And they have the potential to recast as a blessing, something which we might otherwise see as mundane. On Tuesday night at the Lexington Interfaith Clergy Association annual Interfaith Thanksgiving service, I shared a teaching from the Talmud in the name of Rabbi Hanina Bar Papa about this type of blessing. He says, anyone who enjoys anything in this world without offering God a blessing, it is as if they are stealing from God. This means that if I eat something or drink something without first saying a blessing, it is as if I am taking something that isn't mine, even if I bought it with my own money, even if I made it myself. A blessing in the Jewish tradition is a kind of payback to God. It's an acknowledgement of how fortunate we are to have access to the resources that we do. And it is an expression of gratitude and a statement of appreciation for what we have. Blessings feature prominently in Parshat Toldo, but these aren't blessings of gratitude. They are blessings expressing a hope that someone will be given certain gifts by God. I spoke about blessings a few weeks ago and Fred gave me a hard time for not defining it, but I'll, I'll say for the moment that a blessing can be a statement of appreciation. It can also be a request for something. And we also tend to use that word for the thing itself that we might have requested. Um, these blessings are a blessing expressing a hope that someone will be given certain gifts by God. And in Parshat Toldot, we learn that Isaac wants to offer a blessing to his son Esau, a blessing that he would have abundance, status, and military success. Instead, Jacob, with the help of his mother, Rebecca, tricks his father, Isaac, into giving him the blessing intended for his brother Esau. When Esau discovers what has happened, he asks his father for another blessing. This moment is a critical point in this story. How does Isaac respond? Well, you might think he would come up with another blessing, but he says of Jacob, I blessed him, now he must remain blessed. And 
to Esau. He says, your brother took away your blessing. It is as if to him, blessings are a zero sum game. There's only so much of them to go around. Isaac gave Jacob all of the blessing and there is nothing left for Esau. He even explains this idea explicitly in the text. I have made him master over you. I have given him all his brothers for servants and I have sustained him with grain and wine. What then can I still do for you, my son? This is a terribly tragic moment. It's tragic for many reasons, but part of what makes it so tragic is Isaac's inability to imagine that he has anything more left to give his son. His blessing to Jacob was focused on resources and on status, presumably his measure of his son's well-being and maybe his measure of his own well-being. He imagines that only one person can be supreme in those areas. Even when Esau begs and Isaac does come up with another blessing, it still has baked into it those assumptions about what it means to be blessed. He blesses Esau. The place that you live will enjoy the fat of the earth. Yet by your sword, you shall live and you shall serve your brother. But when you grow restive, you shall break his yoke from your neck. Isaac's blessing for Esau imagines Esau making the best of a competitive, subservient reality in which Esau uses what strength he has to his advantage. It doesn't sound like a happy existence. Isaac seems to be limited here by his imagination. For him, blessings are the things that one person has that another person doesn't. It's possible that this worldview stems from his own experience, where his half-brother Ishmael was thrown out of the family's house in order to make room for him to be the sole inheritor of his father's, of his family's legacy. In Isaac's life, good things do seem to come at someone else's expense. Earlier in our own Persia, Isaac builds a well, and when it causes conflict, he leaves. He does this repeatedly, again and again, until finally the local king allows him to stay, Abimelech. I can imagine how difficult this must have been for him to have repeatedly put in so much work only to do it again and again. I can see why he might have wanted his son to have total control over his life and not to have to deal with any kind of physical or personal hardship. One person's happiness, however, doesn't have to be at the expense of someone else. It may be easier to say that when we have our basic needs met, of course, but the ability to enjoy and to be grateful for the things that we have, whatever they are, is an amazing gift all on its own. What I think is wonderful about the Birkot Nehenin, the blessings of appreciation, is that they allow us to notice and be grateful for, even the things that aren't ours. Tonight, a group of us will gather to say Havdalah, the prayer marking the end of Shabbat, and we will say the blessing over fragrant spices. You don't have to own those spices in order to smell them. And by smelling them, you aren't diminishing anyone else's ability to enjoy them. We can all enjoy the same spices together. And in fact, doing so can make it even more special. Likewise, when we say a blessing over a beautiful view or over seeing the ocean, we're not suggesting that we have ownership over those things. We're simply being grateful that those things exist and that we're able to appreciate them. Something else I like about Birkot Nehenin is that when we take them seriously, they can help us turn things into blessings. Before I say a blessing, I might have an apple, but afterwards I have transformed the apple into something worth being grateful for. I might be exhausted, wet or cold, but if I notice how some special something is, that can have the potential to completely change my mood. Gratitude can transform our experience of the world 
when we are fortunate enough to be able to experience it. It can turn everyday experiences into gifts. When we think about blessings that we may wish for those around us and for ourselves, there are many worthy things that we may wish for. Among them, let us strive to seek and hold up the blessings that are not zero sum. May we be blessed with the ability to appreciate the things we have that we can share and to experience the world with a sense of awe and wonder. Shabbat Shalom and happy Thanksgiving Shabbat. <laughs>